Forget about intermittent fasting for just a minute while I talk about prolonged fasting, PF versus IF. Prolonged fasting is the unthinkable, the crazy, the thing that everyone would tell you you are absolutely nuts for doing, fasting for 48 to 120 hours. But when I tell you the benefits and what it can do for your weight loss goals, for your fitness goals, for your immune system goals, for your overall health, I don't think you'll even look back. You see, prolonged fasting has some huge effects when it comes to boosting energy, has some huge effects when it comes to protecting your cells, has a humongous, humongous effect when it comes to actually reducing oxidative stress in the body. You see, consuming less calories means less oxidative stress to have to break down those foods, things like that. But I wanna break down a little bit more than just the food side of things. I wanna talk about what is happening inside your body. You see, when you're fasting, you're increasing your cellular resistance to toxins. Your body sort of goes into a protective state. You're not consuming a bunch of foods, so your body sort of hunkers down and starts to protect its cells a lot more, just in case there could be an issue with you not getting more food in the near future. It actually starts to channel energy to protect cells even more. Now, what's the biggest difference between intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting, though? Biggest difference is complete glycogen exhaustion. What is glycogen? Glycogen are the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles and in our liver. And normally when we do some intermittent fasting for like 12, 24 hours, we might exhaust the glycogen, the carbohydrates that are stored in our liver, but we're not exhausting the non-hepatic glycogen, the muscle glycogen. And when you start fasting for longer than 24 hours, that's when you start draining all the glycogen stores. And that's when your body starts using alternative fuel sources like free fatty acids or starts using ketone bodies. Maybe you've heard of people talk about ketosis before. Well, the benefits of ketosis, you're using ketones. You feel good. Well, that same thing comes into effect when you are doing a prolonged fast. Now, when you think about it logically, it makes sense that we would actually have more energy when we're hungry. Why? Well, on the surface, we all think hunger equals tired. But think about it logically. Think about how the body's actually working in this case. You're hungry, so your body wants you to focus on getting food. So you have energy to get that food. Your brain has the energy to stay focused on getting food. That's why people say they experience so much focus and energy when they're fasting. But when we're satiated, when we actually get the food that we need, our body chills out. It got what it needed. It's a little spoiled brat. It's entitled. It got what it wanted. Now it kicks back and it doesn't worry about being focused and it doesn't worry about having energy anymore. Make sense? But all the benefits of prolonged fasting come from hormones. We want to stop thinking about the general calories and we want to start thinking about what's happening at a hormonal level. You see, when we fast, we produce some things that are really interesting. For one, we produce a lot of what is called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. BDNF sort of acts as brain fertilizer. It helps the brain grow. It helps brain cells grow. So when we're fasting, we essentially help our brain grow. Then we have some other things that happen. We have an increase in synaptic plasticity. What does that mean? Well, you see, the way our neurons work in our brain is they have synapses, and that's the connection between two neurons. If we have more synaptic plasticity, it means it's a more solidified connection, a closer bond between the two neurons that allow that synapse to be more effective, meaning the brain can communicate quite a bit better, meaning the brain can communicate with other brain cells, but also the brain can communicate better with the body. Then, of course, there's the increase in stress tolerance. I want you to think about this again from a very outside perspective. Think about being focused on getting food. You're hungry. You need to get food. Are you really going to be worried about what other people are thinking of you? Are you really going to be worried about making sure you check the mail today? No, you don't get bothered by normal stressful things because you're focused. You become a person on a mission going from point A to point B, which is why studies are showing that stress tolerance increases quite a bit when you're doing a prolonged fast. Of course, what you want to hear is the weight loss side of things, right? Well, when you're fasting, you have an increase in what is called adenopectin. Adenopectin is sort of a protein modulator that helps the body dictate what it's going to do with different energy sources. And there's usually an inverse relationship with fat and adenopectin. So what that means is high levels of adenopectin mean lower levels of body fat. Lower levels of adenopectin mean higher levels of body fat. So fasting increases our levels of adenopectin, which down the line, long term, not just during the period of fasting, can cause you to lose some weight, particularly lose some body fat. There's even been studies that are linking this with obesity, so that's pretty powerful right then and there. 
I've already talked a little bit about IGF and how fasting can lower it. But let me tell you this, a lot of muscle people will tell you that IGF is good because it's a precursor to growth hormone. And that's true. The thing is, IGF is not the end all be all. IGF increases our risk of cancer, but high levels of IGF in our bloodstream also cause premature aging. They are essentially what are leading us to age. So with prolonged fasting, we get these huge reductions of IGF that allows us to essentially last longer and not age as quickly. So periods here and there, a prolonged fast can have a huge effect on aging in general. Now the big one, the one I really want to share with you, and that is the reset on the immune system. Here's what's cool. If you fast for three or more days, white blood cells begin to die. Sounds bad, except for the fact that after three days and those white blood cells die, your body creates new white blood cells. That means new, fresh, reset white blood cells that are resetting your immune system, a whole new immune system that is new and can improve on different things in the body. That right there is enough to want to do this at least every couple of months. Now, how often should you prolong fast? And how often should you intermittent fast? Because I'm a fan of both. If you do a 12 to 24 hour intermittent fast once a week, you're in business. But if you do a prolonged fast, maybe once a quarter, maybe just semi-annually, even twice a year, you can get a huge effect. Your bang for the buck when it comes to fasting improves so much after 24 hours. You pound for pound get more per hour with a prolonged fast after 24 hours than you do with an intermittent fast. So it goes a long way. As always, make sure you hit that like button on this video. Make sure you subscribe so you can get more of these videos and get the true science of what's happening in your body so that we stop just trusting everything that's out there so we can start applying what is real with real research. We'll see you in the next video.